Good morning, out here for a morning walk. You can see behind me some of the storm damage that we had from the big snow, the real heavy wet snow, and then it was windy. Blew a couple bigger trees down there. Have my work cut out for me. Little joke there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've been getting a lot of people asking me the question um, about what are my opinions on the uh, red heifer thing. And if you don't know, um, Israel has been trying for years to get a pure red heifer, uh, a breed of cattle that has sort of a rust brown reddish collar to it. And they need this in order to be able to um, do a burnt sacrifice of it, whereby they can purify the different things they're used in the temple. What are my thoughts on that whole thing? And they finally have one, and they're saying now that they can purify the temple and they will be ready to do their, you know, build the temple there, the, um, where the uh, Antichrist basically is going to show up and whatever. I'll get back to that here in a minute. What are my thoughts? Well, um, good and bad thoughts. Uh, the good is that it is Bible prophecy. The Bible talks about that the Antichrist will one day cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Well, there has to be a system of animal sacrifice going on there in order for him to cause it to cease. So that system is coming back. Uh, that's part of Bible prophecy. So in that sense, it's good. It's good that they are carrying this out. So as a Christian, I can look at it and I can say, well, praise the Lord, it's Bible prophecy being fulfilled. I'm seeing it. <clears throat> We're seeing it. And, of course, that means, uh, <clears throat> consequently, that if we're seeing this thing happening, then that means that the catching up of the body of Christ is not far off. Uh, the time of Jacob's trouble is approaching. The Jews are getting ready to build their temple and the whole thing and whatever. Um, <clears throat> I am a dispensational uh, preacher, believer in the King James Bible. You won't sway me from either one of those positions, so don't waste your time in the comments. Well, what about this? What about that? Go someplace else. I don't have time for stupid people. Uh, for ignorance, that's willful ignorance. Uh, people that are ignorant and want to know the truth, well, I have time for those people. Um, I've had time for those people because I've put uh, many uh, thousands of hours of preaching and teaching on YouTube for free. Not monetized. I don't make any money from YouTube. So I think I care a little bit about what people, um, people that are in ignorance, that I can teach them and, and instruct them in the way. Um, so having said that, that's the good of this red heifer situation. It's good to see these things happening that will lead ultimately to us getting to go home to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but now the bad. Uh, a lot of people are are just all excited about this for Israel. We're so happy for Israel. Um, the tricky part of being here in the end times is this thing of our stand uh, in regards to Israel. Um, there's a lot of very corrupt people in the Jewish system right now. Um, there are people that call themselves Jews and they are not Jews. Um, the Bible says they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. Um, uh, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say that they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I'll make them of the synagogue of Satan. Uh, Revelation 2.9, Revelation 3.9. So there are some very evil influences there. And you have the modern day state of Israel. The people say, well, it was founded by the Rothschilds and things. Well, yeah, there was a bunch of people there that were heavily into the occult and they founded the whole, you know, put their money into it and pressured the Pope and everything else to make the modern day state of Israel, which is perfectly consistent with the scriptures. Again, Israel comes back in unbelief, according to Ezekiel chapter 36. God doesn't bring them back because they all believe in Jesus. That's not true. Anybody that says that doesn't know the scriptures. They come back in unbelief. That's why there's the time of Jacob's trouble. God pours out his judgment and his wrath upon the nation of Israel. Uh, you know, the Bible says that they're, that they're contrary to all men and they please not God. 
that the wrath of God has come upon them to the uttermost. The Bible says that. So um, it's a time that's coming where they're doing things that are very evil. And I will tell you right now that this red heifer thing is, it's, uh, it's part of prophecy, but it's not something that God wants them to do. And I'm going to be uh, preaching a sermon today why Judaism is inferior to Christianity. Christianity is better. It's completed Judaism. I preached on that many years ago. Um, and the thing that you have to understand is that all this thing of, well, we're going to sacrifice these bulls, these red heifers, um, it's not a good holy thing that they're doing. They're doing this because they reject the perfect sacrifice of God manifest in the flesh. God, has, God hath purchased us with his own blood. Acts chapter 20 talks about that. When did God purchase us with his own blood? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. You want a scripture that proves Jesus is God? Right there is one. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 20. Um, I think, is it verse 28, I think? You, have, you can look that up. But um, the whole point is, uh, the sacrifice has already been made. The Messiah came. Israel as a nation rejected Jesus Christ. Now there were, of course, Jews, Peter, Paul, James, you know, all the different disciples there and, and a lot of Jews on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 there and, and lots of others that did get saved, that are born again, part of the body of Christ. But as a whole, as a nation, the Jews rejected their Messiah. And, you, you know, you listen to the English translation of their national anthem and it's all the hope of israel or something i think it's called and they they're talking about one day soon you know maybe we'll see the messiah and we're hoping for the messiah uh well you're going to see the messiah but uh he's not coming back as a nice guy he's not coming back as the lamb of god he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of judah which is interesting because the jews have that as their flag for the city of of uh jerusalem lion of the tribe of judah they don't even know they're prophesying their own future they have the Antichrist flag of the hexagram, and um, then they have the uh, Jerusalem flag with the line of the tribe of Judah. Um, I don't want anything to do with that hexagram sign, that cursed Masonic um, flag, rather not sign, but the flag. I don't fly that or anything else. I have a Jerusalem flag, and uh, I have that in my office, hanging up in one of the upstairs windows and things. Um, because I'm not, I, I'm not anti-Semitic. I don't hate Jewish people. But a lot of the people that are there, they are not even Jews. And uh, that's why we call them the papal Juden, um, Jews that serve the Pope, in other words. Um, <laughs> but so my, my thoughts on the whole red heifer issue, uh, while it's good that it's Bible prophecy being fulfilled, it's bad and that they're thinking that the blood of bulls and goats can take away sin. We're going to purify the altar and the temple and everything else with these red heifers. Um, you know, in the book of Hebrews, which I'll be doing a study on today, the book of Hebrews says about it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. You can sacrifice your animals. It doesn't mean anything. It's not going to take away your sins. You know, the old hymn goes, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Um, there is no remission without the shedding of blood. Um, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. There is no sin that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cleanse and take away. Uh, it's very important to understand that. And, you know... These Jews, they're, they, a lot of them, they hate Jesus Christ. Uh, I know some of you pointed out the thing about Ben Shapiro, that little segment I played where he was on the Joe Rogan show here not long ago, and, and he said about how that Jesus um, was a, a Jewish rebel that um, led an insurrection against Rome, and he got killed for his trouble. And some of you said, and I was pointing out the thing that they don't believe in his resurrection. I used the clip to point that out, that they don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and some of you pointed out, well, you know, it's not even, it's not even true. Jesus did, was not a Jew that led a, an insurrection against Rome. He didn't have anything to do with that. Um, Jesus was not trying to overthrow Rome. 
tell that's a piece of the tarp over there. I was wondering what that was. I thought, is that that snowshoe hair again? Back in there? But, no. Um, but, you know, Ben Shapiro lied. Uh, I don't trust Ben Shapiro. I will never trust a man that rejects Jesus Christ. I don't care who he is or what he says or whatever. Oh, you know, oh, we're Jews and you should respect us where we're at. That we don't, we don't accept Jesus and you should just kind of respect that. I don't respect it. Because if you reject the Son, then you don't have the Father. Because the Son and the Father are the same being. Okay, understand that there's separation there between Son and Father. They're not the same part of the Godhead. But uh, Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Um, well, I don't believe that. Well, then go to hell. That's where you're heading. If you reject Jesus Christ as being God, you can't be saved. I mean, how does it even make sense? I get these people in the comments, you know, and they say, well, I believe that uh, Jesus is my Savior or whatever else. He died on the cross for my sins, but he's not God. Well, then, if his blood is just the blood of a man, then you can't get saved from the blood of a man, a sinner. You can't get saved from that. So, um, so what do we, how do we take a stand on this whole thing? Well, um, appreciate the fact that Yes, the red heifer thing is part of Bible prophecy. Okay, it's scripture being fulfilled. They are going to get their system of sacrifices going again because they rejected Jesus Christ. Uh, and remember that. Do not um, <clears throat> bless them for this. It's not a blessed thing. It's a cursed thing. Again, the Jews are getting ready to build their temple so that they can worship the Antichrist and, and accept him as their Messiah. They're literally going to be worshiping the dragon, which gives power to the beast. And that's why God's wrath is coming upon the nation of Israel. And um, <clears throat> the vast majority are going to get slaughtered. Um, and, you know, I've known some lost atheistic devils, and they'll, they'll get snarky with it, and they'll say, ah, it doesn't make any sense. As a Christian, you're, you're for Israel, and yet you want them to come back to a land so that God can kill them. Now, that may, doesn't make any sense. Well, the, the uh, natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. Uh, they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You don't understand. Um, <clears throat> there are certain things that are prophesied. And we can be thankful for what is prophesied as it's coming to pass. And we can see it because that, you know, we've been given a more sure word of prophecy. So we can look and say, wow, Scripture is being fulfilled. Praise the Lord. But that doesn't mean that it's a, a good thing. All right. Um, you know. I'm trying to think of how I could give that as an example. But uh, those that are saved, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, the Bible says the vast majority end up in hell. For all is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there at. Well, does that mean we take joy in people going to hell? No, it doesn't mean that. But we take joy in the fact that we can look at the world and we can see things and say, that's exactly as the Bible said. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Uh, the red heifer thing. I heard. I don't know if you heard that. Probably didn't hear that on the microphone. But the grouse are out right now. They're the roughed grouse here in northern Maine, and they do their little. They flap their wings. And it sounds like they're beating a little drum. I always laugh about that. I just heard one over this way. But um, it's part of their mating thing, the spring mating ritual. But um, anyhow, getting back to what I was saying, uh, you know we can look at the red heifer situation and we can say, okay, praise the Lord, scripture's being fulfilled, but I'm not for what's going on. I'm not for these wicked uh, papal union, especially with all their financial schemings and all their other evil stuff that they're part of. And um, I'm not for what they're doing. And this red heifer thing, it's a blasphemy against Jesus Christ. They're thinking that they can have this red heifer sacrifice and whatever and this is going to please God it's not going to please God you're getting ready to worship Satan you're going to be building a temple and uh, to worship the devil and you know the the teaching among the a lot of the radical Jews is that they're going to have a Jewish utopia that they're going to control the whole world without Jesus Christ that's what you also have to remember their kingdom and whatever else that they're trying to build it's a kingdom without Jesus Christ. And I believe that they're taking over the Vatican and um, a whole lot of bad things that they're doing and the Lord's going to stop them. 
And um, that's a sure word of prophecy. Jesus Christ, the Lord God, uh, Jehovah God, is Jesus Christ. And, um, and if you don't believe in that, well, then you are lost and on your way to hell. I promise you that. And he is going to put an end to this whole system. You better make sure that you're on his side. Okay. Um, so that's going to be it. I'll leave some links here at the end of the video. And we'll see you in upcoming studies. Thank you for watching.